645 right now and today the trial of a former army sergeant is set to begin. Daniel Perry was working as a rideshare driver when he turned down a street to drop off a customer and found a group of people protesting. Perry's lawyer says some of the people beat on Perry's car, including Garrett Foster. Foster and his fiance had attended demonstrations in the past and at this one he was holding a rifle. Perry claims Foster raised a weapon prompting Perry to shoot Foster. Perry says he acted in self-defense. Jury selection set to begin at 915 this morning. Perry faces up to life in prison if convicted. And Tony Plahetsky joins us now in the studio this morning. Good morning. And Tony, there are a lot of circumstances in this case that the jury is really going to have to unpack, huh? including who was the aggressor and who was protecting himself in this case. When you look at the evidence, Perry's lawyer will argue that Daniel Foster, or excuse me, that Garrett Foster raised his AK-47. Keep in mind, Garrett Foster had an assault rifle with him at the protest. He was well known in the protest community. But the state will argue that in fact, it was Daniel Perry who was the aggressor, that he drove his car into the protest, that protesters, including Foster, felt that they were under threat. And at that point, that is when this clash between the two men happened. So this is a, a lot of witnesses, I understand, right? How many witnesses are expected to be, to be called? Do we know this yet? There are multiple witnesses who are there. Keep in mind, this is a protest with hundreds of people right on Congress Avenue at the height of the 2020 social justice protest. But what we are told is that there is no video that captures that precise moment in which this conflict between the two men happened. There will, in fact, be protesters who were called to the stand to testify that Garrett Foster did not, did not raise his gun at Daniel Perry, but Perry's defense will then try to undermine their credibility and say they can't really be trusted to tell the truth about what happened. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're for a reason, right? So they, you would think they would have this inherent bias so that they're to stick up for their side. That's going to be an obstacle in and of itself, right? It absolutely is. And legal experts say that when you look at the facts of this case, going into trial, it is very, very difficult to predict an outcome. That's largely unusual here in Travis County. We don't often have cases where the facts are so in dispute, but as experts will tell you, that this case represents exactly why we have juries. One legal expert, a professor at Texas Tech Law School said, the facts of this case, in fact, sound like a law school exam. Oh, right, so again, the charges he's facing are what? Murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and deadly conduct. And I do wanna point out, both men were legally armed, correct? Right. That is our understanding. There is some dispute about that, but some of these facts are exactly what will be sorted out in trial. Again, this trial is expected to last up to two weeks, possibly longer. And again, it's going to be very, very closely watched. The biggest trial that we've really had in Travis County in a number of years before the pandemic. Yeah. We'll Tony, see. thank you for your time again. 915 is when everything's set to begin today, right? That's right. And we will be covering this trial. I do want to point out we had hope to stream this trial live, but the judge said he will not allow that because going into the trial, there's some discussion about the possibility of witness intimidation and witness oh. tampering. So okay. underscoring just the volatility of all of this. All right, Tony, appreciate that. Of course, we'll be closely following it and bring you updates on KVU.com. You can see our complete coverage right now on our website and on our KVU YouTube page.